Welcome back to Sports Notebook. Tonight's show is devoted to racing. As I traveled around the Atlantic City race course the other morning, I came across one of the more colorful figures this season at the race course. His name is Bobby Hodge, and he's been gracious enough to join us on Sports Notebook tonight. Bobby, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much, Chuck, and it's a pleasure to be here. Very interesting. I'm just following Jim Murphy here. I was very uh, uh, impressed on his conversation, and it's a pleasure for me to be here with you. Right. You're not the normal horse trainer owner. You uh, you bring a little I'm different a flavor to the Atlantic City <laughs> race course. I'm probably you not were normal once on the Grand Ole Opry circuit. I did work uh, well uh, on the Grand Ole Opry itself at the Old Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, down on Broad Street. Uh, I was there in '61. I went on in 1961 with Roy A. Cuff. Uh, shot Jackson on the steel guitar. Shot was more in instrumental. He was uh, Roy Cuff's steel guitar player. Along with, he worked for Kitty Wells and those people. But I went on the first night in October of 1961. Loretta Lynn was her first night. Her and Mooney, her husband, was backstage. My wife Mary was backstage. Our first night. I went out first. Loretta Lynn came on right after me. Our, my wife, her husband, thought we was going to trip over a microphone cord or something on the way out. But uh, we were featured, uh, I was, and of course, mm -hmm. Loretta stayed there and joined the Grand Ole Opry. And, but uh, somehow your interest in music evolved into horses. Well, Tell us about how that evolved, because that's an interesting story. We, uh, we came, I played some shows in the wintertime in Tampa, Florida, mm -hmm. at a nightclub there, and we, let, we were living in Madison, Wisconsin for 20 years. Uh, and we came down when the kids got out of school for Christmas vacation. Uh, we jumped on our bus. It was a blizzard going through Chicago from Madison on down through Indi Indiana. And it got nicer and nicer. When we uh, got down to, uh, to Tampa, I was going to play a Christmas show uh, at a, a club there for a week, which helped us pay expenses. And uh, we laid on the beach, 82 degrees in Tampa. The roses were in full bloom, and we had just left a blizzard, you see. Nothing like that Florida sunshine, That's is there, true. Bobby? And I, I owned a nightclub up there. And so after spending a week, week and a half, it was time to, for the kids to go back to school. Uh, I went back to Wisconsin, and the lounge that I owned up there, the snow and ice had froze the door. You couldn't even get it open. <laughs> I said, I started to pull on the door as I went uh, to open my lounge. Uh, it had iced up and snow had got over it. I slipped and fell, and I looked up and I said, Lord, if you let me get up from here, I'm getting out of here. I'm going back to Tampa. I called a real estate agent and sold my place. And, uh, got lucky and, and got uh, pretty good dollars for it, and then I went back to Tampa and was fortunate. I just wound up finding a, a nightclub that really fit uh, my needs. I didn't want a restaurant. I didn't want to cook food. I just wanted to uh, uh, sell intoxicated beverage and, sell, and sing country music, yeah. too. Uh, and it wound up to people, and, and we wound up uh, just uh, a half a mile from Tampa Bay Downs, uh, that was 1972, and uh, of course well, with country music, a lot of the jockeys, uh, the owners, trainers, grooms, and what have you, everybody works at the racetrack, uh, beat a, spe a steady path to our door, and and uh, and first thing you know, after being there for a couple of years and going to the races, I got very enthused, very impressed. As you know, it's easily once you go to the races. <clears throat> Uh, if you have a little success one way or the other, you know, you're hooked. You get the fever, don't you, Bob? You surely do. And uh, so from the horsemen coming in, frequenting your establishment. One, one gentleman had, uh, had a little cheap horse, beautiful animal called Stay and Play. And he'd run out of funds and he wanted to leave. And uh, he said, he sold me the horse for $250 over a cocktail. I, I paid him and, and we run the horse back in about a, uh, a week with a trainer. Of course, my wife nor I was, a, you know, we, I, I was an owner, of course, but didn't have a trainer. Anyhow, he run third. And I, and I screamed and hollered. You could hear me probably over in Georgia from Tampa Bay. And he run third. And I thought, boy, that's, that's got to be a thrill that I, you know, you just don't want to walk away from. And, and then uh, we uh, acquired, uh, started claiming some horses. Um, my wife wound up, Mary Hodge, she wound up uh, going to the track every morning. And, and, she, and an old gentleman who had retired, had been a trainer for 72 years. Or, uh, he was 72, he'd been a trainer for, for about 50 years. Art Chestnut, he's passed away now. And uh, he, he really uh, taught Mary how to be a trainer, and she mm. studied a lot of books. And, and my wife, Mary Hodge, was leading trainer in 1985, 84, 85 at Tampa Bay Downs, and tied for leading trainer in 86, and wound up second on, on the last couple of races of the day, because uh, 
uh, Tony Jordan uh, went ahead of us there. But, uh, and we had 30 some horses and it was hard to get good help and, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's very expensive to, to carry a lot of help with you. had four grooms and an exercise rider and all that. We're down now, we brought uh, nine horses here to Atlantic City and uh, there's my son and just my wife and I. It's a family affair and uh, we, we do everything. You've sold the Maverick Lounge. We've sold the Maverick Lounge. And now you're full-fledged into the horse business. We have. We, I sold the Maverick Lounge actually in 1985, uh, and uh, we've been just uh, horse racing uh, since then. We keep scaling down a little bit. What was it about the business? Uh, it's, of course, what they say, chicken, chicken, and chicken one day, feathers the next day in this business, you know. Uh, a lot of times you think you're going to win as an owner or trainer. Uh, and you don't win because uh, it everything has to fall into place and you also have to have pretty much the best horse in the race but you can have the best horse and still get beat because of horses coming in or out or getting left at the gate or a thousand reasons why a horse don't win but only one reason why he does because he gets there first but uh, the when you do win uh, there is very few thrills in life that I've found uh, that that match uh, the excitement and good feeling you, you do when the spectacle of the race of when your horse wins because in our case we work with a horse we rub their legs and we, we do the grooming and we clean the stalls and we track them in the morning and we tack them and and uh, so they're really a, a personal extension of, of almost our efforts and when you can see your horse take the lead coming down the stretch or he's closing real fast and he's coming to the wire. Those few seconds of excitement, uh, there, I don't think there's anything that could give you the high and the excitement uh, that I feel, my wife feels, my family feels, and I'm sure most every horseman. And if you can survive in this business and pay all your bills and still stay in the business, uh, we don't have any owners. You know, we, we own all of our horses. We have for several years now. And uh, if you can be successful, pay all your bills, and and, uh, and survive in this business, uh, there's, to me, there is just nothing like it. Probably uh, my uh, getting applause on the Grand Ole Opry uh, would have come close, because uh, you feel a real thrill knowing that, like when I was on the Grand Ole Opry, I'd listened to it from the hills of North Carolina where I was born and raised in Gaston here in North Carolina, the Smoky Mountains, and talking about the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, I'd listened to that, you know, for all my life, you know, from ever. Uh, we had a battery-powered little RCA radio uh, that we listened to it, and uh, sometimes when the battery would run out, we were really disappointed. But at any rate, the excitement of being on the Grand Ole Opry. When you see your horse coming down the stretch. There's nothing. Is that, was that more exciting than hearing the applause? Is that more yes. exciting than hearing I, the applause to at the Grand Ole Opry? If I had to make If you had choice. your choice. Yes, yes. And you know you're going to make some money, too. You know? <laughs> you're sure you're going to make some like money. Like the guy who says, well, I don't need the money, but the people I owe are raising heck about it. You know? <laughs> but, uh, of course, you've got to make money. Uh, racing is a very expensive. It is a very expensive. Uh, in order to have the horses to win races, uh, they've got to be the better horses. And uh, You have a Jersey bred. Tell us about your Jersey well, bred you have out at Atlantic City. I've, I've got a four-year-old uh, Jersey bred that... We started our last year as a three-year-old. I bought two horses from uh, Mike Stavola, who races over at um, uh, Monmouth Park and I guess other tracks. I'm not, this is the first time I've ever been to New Jersey, mm -hmm. but I know uh, they tell me he has Middletown stables over there. Well, he's a, a big breeder and at uh, the spring, he, he sort of weeds out in Florida. He has a farm there in Ocala. Uh, he weeds out his young horses and um, and, and just gets rid of him. Uh, he's a pretty wealthy man, I understand. And I bought two horses. I bought, he wanted 2,000 for a two-year-old. Hmm. And, uh, and, and this two-year-old's uh, half-brother was called Billy the Best. His name was Zany Billy. Uh, uh, I was gonna be able to get him for $2,000. Well, being a horse trader, you, you learn to horse trade. I said, well, he said, I've got another filly here uh, we'll even throw in. And I said, well, that'd be $1,000 a piece then. This is Tim Kelly, his trainer. And he said, yeah. I said, well, you know, and, and the filly I've got now, she was sort of ugly duckling. She hadn't full, filled out. She had a, sort of an ugly head on her. She, and I really didn't pay any attention to her. But the first time after I bought her, after three or four days, the track was closing at Tampa Bay Downs. This is last year, or two years ago, because she just turned four. Wayne Cruz got on both of them. Uh, he, was, he was a very successful uh, rider, mm -hmm. Tampa Bay Downs. In fact, he won the Tampa Bay Derby on Bull Southerner. But anyhow, he gets on the two of them, and the horse I'm really high on, the two-year-old Zany Billy, beautiful animal. All, it just uh, looked, looked like a racehorse, you know. And he said, 
This horse is all right, but he said this filly is going to be your racehorse.